Okay, so this is how a lot of wall furnaces and floor furnaces work. You've got a pilot generator right there. Now I'm gonna turn the main burner off so I don't get too high here, but there you can see the pilot. And the pilot is heating up the other end of this rod. That's a pilot generator. It's, a, it's kind of the same thing as a fat thermocouple. And, and you can see here, so this is the source of the power, this pilot generator. And it's just a chemical reaction. The, the, the pilot flame hits the tip and these two different metals uh, create a reaction that creates a voltage. So that voltage goes here. So you can almost always recognize this at the gas valve because it's unique that they're together and they're red and white. And so if I set the meter to volts DC and I measure that, we've got 166. And this is under a load. See, right now this is on. Now I have it turned off manually, but this, the valve is engaged and that's always the best way to measure these voltages is under a load. Because when it's not under a load, that can sometimes result in what they call phantom voltage. You don't need to understand that. You just need to know that checking under a load is always best. So under a load, these, it's producing um, 165 right now. And, and that's sufficient because like, like I might have told you before, it only needs 100 uh, typically. Now that voltage is sent up on this wire to a sensor that is right over there. It has a little reset button on it. Because if the exhaust gases exit, normally the exhaust gases go up, but if there's a problem up there with the exhaust and it backs up, it'll come out here and trip that sensor. And most older wall furnaces don't have that. The younger ones do. Most floor furnaces don't have that, at least the old ones. But anyway, so we're starting off with 166 under load. It sends out, it sends out 166 up and back down, and, and if there's a problem, that stops it. But if there's no problem, it comes back down. And then we can measure the loss, how much we're losing there to see if that's an issue by measuring the two wires that are going up there, just putting the probes in. So we're currently losing 8.7 millivolts. So currently that's not a problem. Then that power goes to the thermostat it comes back to the valve. And so we can do a similar thing there. I can measure where the, uh, the, that point and that point. And so you can see we're losing 25 millivolts through that circuit, which is actually quite good. You know, I've seen a, a lot of old messed up thermostats and thermostat circuits that you lose like 100 millivolts. So currently that circuit, you know, the power starts at the power generator. It's going up. That, that's okay, it's going over, coming back, and that's okay. And, um, and so the delivered voltage is 138, 139. So that's sufficient. Now, why wasn't it working before? Well, the truest answer is at the moment, I don't know for sure, but for one thing, this is a crimped connection on a solid wire, and that's always bad news. And they get loose. Here, here's where I'm gonna let you hold this. Here. I want you to see this. Mm -hmm. Oh, it came right off. I was gonna move it around, but you see how easily it came mm -hmm. off? Yeah. So, and this is, I'm more doing this for the audience, you already know, but I'm doing it for the people in the video, watching the video. Mm -hmm. um, so that connection is pretty tenuous, and like I might've mentioned on the phone, it takes very little to stop that quarter volt. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold that over and recrimp it so that there's at least two strands there and it's going to be much more robust. Same deal here is I don't now that one's actually yeah I'm <laughs> I'm proving that was a nice solid connection but it's still a crimped connection. So this connection I'm going to cut and wire tie because a wire tie I'm sorry not wire tie um, wire nut because a wire nutted connection is always better than this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to redo recrimp recrimp this redo this. And then I'm going to check those connections. Okay. And then I'm going to check the connections up there, and I'll double check the connections there. And so, while I can't prove it, I can almost guarantee you that one of these connections was kind of coming and going, like in its terms of how well it was connected, and that was probably why it wasn't working. Otherwise, you can get intermittent problems with gas valves. 
You know, that gas valve doesn't even look like it's original to me. I think it's been replaced. Could be wrong. I just, I see this pipe thread and usually the factory doesn't do it that way. But um, one other possible cause is intermittent problems. One, one intermittent problem can be a gas valve because they have little tiny, very thin little tiny membranes that can get stuck in cold weather. I doubt that's the issue, but it is a possibility. Okay, so I did the wire nut on that connection and this is a new fitting and I doubled the wire, wire over so it can't twist as it, you know, as, as the, the crimp won't twist and it won't move nearly so easily. Um, that was a little bit loose. That was nice and tight. That's nice and tight. One of the set screws on the uh, thermostat was a little loose. And then this fitting was a little loose. I mean, none of them were that loose, but, you know, I tightened them all down. Uh, what's interesting is normally there's a um, manual reset here because if the exhaust gases spill, this trips the unit off. But for whatever reason on this one, it's an automatic reset. And so basically the corrective measures today is to um, tighten up all the electrical connections. And actually I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to tap on that pilot assembly. In fact, this is, excuse the annoying sound. Um, you know, a thorough cleaning of a pilot would, would mean taking it apart, but sometimes... Now, if you ever do this, for the love of goodness, know what you're tapping on. If you don't know what you're tapping on, then don't tap on it. But I'm going to hit the right there because that's a strong part of the frame. And sometimes that just knocks out a little ash out of the pilot without me having to take it all apart. So, anyway... Don't do that unless you know exactly what you're doing. Okay, we're all done. Um, I can't completely promise that it's fixed because it was working when I got here, but I think you understand the thought process here. Um, one other thing worth mentioning is always have two carbon monoxide detectors of different brands, different makes, whatever, because um, these are cheap devices. I saw a news report once where they bought a dozen of them, and two of them were defective out of the box. I mean, they, they beeped, but the sensors didn't work. And so if you buy, if you are so unlucky as to buy a defective detector and the factory was having a bad day, and you buy two identical ones, one after the other, and they came off the same series of detectors, and both of them are defective, and now you got nothing. So buy two and make sure they're completely different. One in the, um, one maybe in the bedroom, one in the common area, and perhaps elsewhere.